Welcome back to CS201 Walkthroughs. My name is Lukash, and today we're going to be talking about some of the problems in Homework 2. So, if you haven't watched the tree recursion video, I highly recommend you go watch that first. This will make a number of references to that and the concepts we discussed that will be critical for success in Homework 2. Um, so these are the problems, at least that I have for Homework 2. They may have changed very slightly. Um, Professor Slade sometimes changes around a couple of the questions each year, but they should be similar to this, or at least most of them should be similar. So I'm just going to walk through some advice for them. Uh, and up here I have this kind of framework that we established in the tree recursion video about separating the car and the coder and running the function on them separately. So if we have a function and we run it on a tree like this, we're going to run it on the car, run it on the coder, and then if the coder is still a list, or if the car is still a list, we can even make this example more complicated by like making one a list, and then this would be function on list1. And then we would have two recursive calls under here, which would be a function1 and function empty list. There we go. Look at that. So the, the principle is that we break it up into the car and the coder until they're either not a list or an empty list. These are our base cases. Then we have to find a way of combining those. So in the last one, uh, what we had to do was, what did we do in the last one? Oh, we were checking the tree and. So you know, if there were trues and falses, we compared those. If there were no booleans, then we said, oh, well, there are no booleans. If there was a boolean in one half and not the other half, we took that boolean. Anyway, so that's an example of figuring out how to mash two of the outputs from the car, you know, one from the car and one from the cutter, uh, of you know the recursive call on the car and the recursive call on the cutter. OK, so for each of these, or not for all of them, but for many of them, you're going to have to do something similar. So say we're taking the depth of the tree. We're going to do the same type of recursive tree uh, separation of the car and the coder. Remember that when we take the car, when we take the car, we get an element from inside a list. In other words, we decrease the depth by one. So, you know, car of uh, of one in a list. car of list 1 is 1. This has a depth 1 greater than this does. All right? So when we car, we increase the depth or we, we decrease the depth. Cutter does not decrease the depth. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we'll do something like this. We'll call depth on this. We'll separate it over here. You know, and the output of depth should be a number, right? So remember that the output of all the recursive calls also has to be a number. It's an important point. The output of each recursive call should match the output, or should should reflect uh, the output of the original function. Or I guess it, it has to, right? The recursive calls are called with the original function. So if depth has to return a number, then when you run depth on different parts of the tree, that also has to return, well, a number, right? So if I run depth on, for example, this, well, that's one less than this, right? So I should do something like add one to what I get when I run depth on this. Well, then what I'm going to do with the number I get from here and the number I get from here? I'm going to get a number for the depth of this tree and a number for the depth of this tree. What am I going to do with those numbers? Well, the problem specifications say I should take the maximum depth. So I'll probably take the maximum of the depth I get from adding 1 to the depth of this and the depth of this. Okay. For sum, we do something similar. We sum elements in some elements in the car and some elements in the cutter. And in the cutter, unless your add a leaf. Then once you have, you know, what do we do 
we do with the sum of the car and the sum of the cutter? Well, we want, since we want the sum of the whole tree, we add them. For, um, so uh, another, you know, something that makes sum not too different, you know, a little bit easier than prod is that in sum, when we encounter something that isn't a number, we can just return zero. Right? We can say, okay, say we get something like this, one and not a number. Well, we can say, if sum encounters a leaf that's not a number, just return zero. And then when we say, okay, add that to what we get from this part of the tree, it'll say one plus zero equals one, which is what we want. For prod tree, we have to multiply all the elements of a tree. And we can't, you know, we don't necessarily just want to say, we'll output one if no numbers, right? Because if there are no numbers, then we have to output something else. I forget exactly what it is. It's something like, uh, we have to output like no numbers. I don't remember exactly, but you have to some indicator that there are no numbers. So you can't just always output one if there are no numbers in the tree. So instead you have to do something like what we did in our tree recursion video, where we checked whether tree and returned a boolean before trying to use that boolean. In this case, we can check whether prod tree on the car or cutter returns a number before we multiply by it. Right? So we'll have four cases again. We'll have prod on the car and prod cutter are both numbers, in which case you multiply. Only one is a number, in which case you just take that one, take the number, or neither, in which case no numbers. Okay, let's move on. Count if ped pred tree uh, is so I think I would compare it's fairly similar to sum. It's just instead of taking the number, similar to sum, but instead of taking the number from each leaf, you ask if pred leaf. All right. For average, you can probably come up with a clever way to use sum and count if combine well uh, in average and you don't really have to do tree, you know read rewrite another function for this types this is getting pretty repetitive but you're gonna call types on the car and cutter until you get to leaves leaves so the output of types I believe is a Output should be a list of types, which means the output of each of the recursive call, but of each recursive call, also has to be a list of types. So when we have those two lists, one from the car and one from the cutter, what do we do with them? We have list something like integer, um, character, and we have another list that's a string symbol. Well, we want a list of all of the types in the entire tree, so we're going to mash those together. If you look all the way back at our list functions video, you will find a function that mash, mashes lists together. Cool pred list, I think, uh, is not a tree recursion function. It just asks you to go through a list and separate out values for which pred returns true and false. I think the easiest way to do this is with a helper function that has variables 
that keep track. That keep track of true and false or of, of values in the original list for which pred returns true false. Remember in helper functions you can add as many variables as you want. You can't in the original function because then I'll call it an error when Professor Slade tries to run it with the number of functions he said it should run, uh, the number of inputs he said it should run with. Tree min, again, I hate to repeat myself, but run on the car and the cutter. until you hit leaves. And then here, remember this function outputs the min of a tree. So your function or tree min on the car will return the min of the car. And tree min on the cutter will return the min of the cutter. And if you want the min of the whole tree, you want the min of the car and the cutter. I bet you can figure out how to do that. If not, always come into office hours. Count leaves. Um, but you could come up with a way to use what is it? Count count if uh, to just repurpose count if for count leaves, right? So count leaves. We're asking how many leaves are there. Count if we're asking how many leaves are there for which a condition is true. So what if we made that condition something really simple? All right. Map tree I think is a little bit tougher than the rest. So here we have to map a procedure onto a tree and maintain the structure of that tree. Right. Map a procedure onto a tree and maintain the structure of the tree. So as we're going through it, we can't really we don't want to lose track of of what we've done. So of course base cases are the same. But when we encounter a list and need to run our function on the car and the cutter, what do we do with those? Right? Well, I bet I'm, I'm going to leave this one to you to kind of ponder, to, to think through. But if you consider that map tree returns tree with structure matching the input tree then map tree on the car should return tree with structure matching part of the original tree and on the cutter should return structure matching the rest of the original tree. Oh boy, it's getting long. Matching the rest of the original tree. So then, oops, so then, dot, 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 just have to fit them together. I'll leave that to you to, to chew on a little bit. So as if you have questions on any of this or need help with any of the problems, come into office hours, post on the Piazza, or email CS201, uh, the CS201 help email. Thanks for watching this video walkthrough, and I hope to see you in the next one.